Hi people, it's Archivist here and today I'm here to talk about the changing tides of World of Warcraft. For a long time now we've had a two year cycle when it comes to World of Warcraft expansions, or at least approximately so. So usually we have the release of the expansion, sales go way up, then you have a patch further down the line, and then another patch and another patch, and then there's a bit of a wait, and then you've got the next expansion after that cycle repeats itself. So with Mr. Pandaria, you essentially had that where the game came out, then you had 5.1, which was a daily content patch, then there was 5.2, a whole new raid, 5.3, another daily content patch, and then 5.4 with Siege of Ulgrimmar, final raid, and you had a good amount of raids in that. But now with Warlords of Draenor, things look to change. Now, according to Corey Stockton, uh, lead content designer at Blizzard at the moment, I believe, uh, this is the final raid of Warlords of Draenor in 6.2, so Hellfire Citadel is the last raid. And also, I think there are hints that Tanan Jungle is essentially where we leave it, so Tanan Jungle is the pinnacle, the wrap-up of, of the expansion. And it sort of makes sense in a way because that's where we first arrived, so it's sort of poetic to make it where we end as well. And that's all very nice and all, but that leaves us with not a lot of content in Warlords of Draenor. So first we had Highmore, a fairly inconsequential raid if you ask me. Uh, not that it wasn't fun, just not entirely really that relevant. Uh, but then you had Blackrock Foundry, which was very good. That was to do with the Iron Horde, the main enemy. And you took the fight to them and dealt with Blackhand. Great raid in my opinion. Now we're currently in Hellfire Citadel. I've only done three bosses, so I can't speak to it uh, too much. But that's just three raids. That is not a lot. I mean, Mr. Pandaria launched with three raids. Admittedly, the final one was a little uh, weak, the Terrace of Endless Springs. And then you had two more raids after that with the Thunder King and Siege of Ulgrimmar, both very big raids. So either Blizzard have massively cheaped out on us here, or there is change coming. So maybe we'll have another patch in the game. I, I do know that flying is going to be introduced in some way, and that's going to be like a minor patch, like a you know like a 6.2.1 or whatever. Uh, but I don't know if there's going to be another, for example, 6.3 with any extra content in it. I, it there may be, but um, looking at the ending of 6.2, it does seem like it's been wrapped up. So what we could potentially expect from this our expansion is coming at us much quicker, so maybe even on a yearly cycle uh, as opposed to two years, uh, which I think would be pretty good. And I think Blizzard may have done this with regards to that recent drop that we saw, and I did a video on where um, approximately 3 million subscribers went from World of Warcraft in a very short space of time. And obviously that's very bad for Blizzard, and they need a way of getting those subscribers back, or at least trying to salvage something. And traditionally, the game subscribers have gone up to the highest rate when a new expansion comes out. And so it would make sense to try and capitalise on that by bringing out expansions faster. They get far more publicity when they do that, when they actually release a new product than just releasing a new patch. I mean, they're very good at just advertising their newest patches. I mean, a lot of people knew about 5.4 when it came out who weren't playing. But when a new expansion comes out, something to actually sell, then everyone knows about it. I mean, Warlords of Draenor did initially sell extremely well and looked like it was actually going to be the saving grace for the game. Uh, the thing about Warlords of Draenor, the, the, the way it's formatted, feels like it was very good, well set up, I should say, for a first impression but it sort of fell flat in the long run because the garrison was a really good idea, but it forces you to sit in your own isolated little playground for such a long time that you almost lose sight of that this is an MMO rather than just you know a standalone single-player MMO. And it made a few choices that maybe weren't so great. I'm actually not a fan of there not being flying in Draenor. I like the model where you can't fly up until the max level and then you can fly. That's, that's just how I like it, but they are going to change that. And, and I feel like... This expansion, which to me had so much promise in terms of story, has sort of been cut short. I, I don't know if this was their original model. I think it's either in response to that massive drop in subscribers, and that wouldn't surprise me, or it's just a new direction they've decided to take. Uh, I mean, we dealt with those warlords, you know, the main enemy, so quickly. I mean, Nazul was taken out in a five-man dungeon, and you had Kargarth Bladefist being the first raid boss of the entire expansion. And, and so getting through them all so, uh, so quickly felt a little strange to me, but it turns out it's just the expansion was so small on the whole relative to the last ones that it did actually make sense to do that. 
Uh, and really the question we need to ask ourselves is, do we want an expansion every year as opposed to every two years? And I like that idea. I mean, I feel like I like the game most when the new expansion comes out. I really enjoy leveling through new content. I mean, some people are different on that. Some people despise leveling for me. As long as it's stuff I haven't done before, I absolutely love it. I really enjoy going through new stuff. That's where you get the most concentrated story. I mean, for all the patches they can release after an expansion has come out, the most story you ever get is during that leveling period for, say, 90 to 100 or 90 to 95. So getting a new, simply a new level bracket is good enough for me. And they could make it so it goes back to being, I don't know, 100 to 105 because it's a smaller expansion. And I would get new continents quicker. The only maybe downside for, for Blizzard's point of view is that they have to come out with totally fresh ideas much quicker. I've heard a few rumours about what may be coming next. And I think I heard something to do with Ashara coming and invading Azeroth while we've been away in Draenor. But that's speculation. I want that to be true, but I, I don't know if it is true. Blizzard have always had this ethos of it's done when it's done. They don't release something according to release dates. They release it when it's ready, when they've done everything. And that's all very well and good. And they've proven that to be true by doing things like Titan, where they've obviously worked on it for years and then they canned it. So that they are willing to just throw things away if they don't think it's good enough. And they do take their time. But if they were to force themselves to this tighter schedule, there is the worry that they'll start releasing things in a more hurried state. And that's very unsettling when it comes to an MMO because MMOs are traditionally the hardest to get right. I mean, Blizzard do it pretty well, but if you think about so many MMOs that have come out and they've been almost unplayable on release because of server issues, bugs, they're just not ready. I mean, it's a massive undertaking and if you're releasing them that much quicker, then the chances of bugs coming up and ruining it for people is much more likely. So there's quite a simple question to us, the players here. Do we want to see World of Warcraft go from being on a roughly two-year release cycle to one year? Will the drawbacks be too much, or do we just want that fresher content more often to keep us interested in the game and avoid that massive one-year lull that we've had previously? Is that something we want to see? So, as always, people, thanks very much for watching, and see you next time.